All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome uh, Megan Gallagher, who is Gallagher, 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 whichever, whichever way you want to pronounce it, uh, yeah. who is in Austin, Texas. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Coming to you guys live. Um, I'm so excited to be here, John. Thank you. I am just so health and my own journey as anyone listening, because I think we all have health, you know, it's a lifelong journey. So we're always learning and trying new things. Absolutely. And and Megan is a two-time TEDx speaker, four-time Amazon bestseller, mental health advocate, TV host. And at 18, you decided uh, to pursue your passion for speaking and helping those with mental health issues. And over the past eight or so years, uh, you, you're, you belong to a lot of speakers bureau, like the Washington Speakers Bureau. So you have been talking many places about this. And that's what we wanted to talk about today, particularly mental health amongst young adults. And Clearly, you're far quali more qualified to talk about young adults these days than I am. My my experience, well, actually, my experience of young adults is having an 18 year old son. But uh, um, so so Megan, uh, I feel that young adults live in a very complicated world today. Like, I mean, our world had its own complications back in the day, like when I was young. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have all this technology and interconnectedness and yeah. comparison culture and on all this. There's so much stuff going on that, to be honest, I mean, sometimes I, I really, I really fear for the the younger generation. I can't believe I said that. Or oh, the younger generation. No, I I do feel for the younger <laughs> generation because of the amount of pressure that I feel that they are under, and the and it has to play havoc. It has to play havoc with their mental health. Yeah, you know, on and I, from my own experience, when I was, I mean, I remember it as young as fifth grade, you know, I started feeling anxiety and specifically anxiety where your mind, like right now, me worrying about tomorrow, like I'm anticipating it happened yet. And what I've realized really a lot about the fear of the so about trying to control things. So for me, like I said, as young as at yeah, fifth grade, I think I was 10 years old. I worrying about sleepovers and little things like elementary school. And then middle school came, it got worse and worse and worse. And then um, I've spoken about this openly, but I read, um, if you will, at, well, I was a, so, uh, sorry, second high school. And I reached a point where I, you know, I'm just still health. I mean, I can barely sit through one month. I am in a very tie and like my eating habits, like every life was just hanging on by a thread. It was very embarrassing, but it opened my eyes to the fact that, you know, power and asking for help because I, you know, didn't know what to do. No one taught, wasn't known. And there were kids at my high school that committed suicide because, you know, unfortunately, I just, I remember thinking like, like you know, about mental health because I just felt so alone with it. And so was when I was 16, I asked uh, for help. And that was it, like, think about it. And that was one of the bravest things we had to just put my pride aside and like sit my parents mm -hmm. down and tell them how I was feeling. But um, it changed I ever did. And I feel like therapy and just starting that at such a young age in my life, you know, I feel very grateful. And now, uh, looking back in hindsight, I feel how everything was so connected for a reason. You know, even though it was very, I'm not discounting or belittling anyone else's mm -hmm. mental health. I can really, really look back and be like, wait, that happened for a reason. And I think that is, we have these moments in life where really, you know, make us just bring us to our nest, you know, just feel so hopeless and like nothing is ever going to get better, but mm -hmm. you dig a little bit deeper and maybe that's asking, for, uh, you know, just one more day or whatever it is, nighttime routine or taking medication, mm -hmm. like whatever you just can't give up on yourself because it, yeah. it's at the end when you don't give up. Yeah, exactly. No, no, it's it's a great point. And, and, but unfortunately, I mean, certainly, I mean, 
I grew up in Ireland, right? And we're just experts at, you know, shoving everything down and just ignoring it, everything. My my wife, who's, who's Californian, complains all the time still to this day. Uh, but even even here in in the U.S., where people tend to be, you know, a little bit more open, uh, I do still feel like there's the stigma. It's like I could, if I if I told you of a physical ailment, right, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I understand that. I, you know, I yeah, yeah, you're going to get that see, fixed. But if yeah, I say, yeah. yeah, but if I say mental, if I say I've got you know some mental health issues, your reactions, most people's reactions, going to be very very different. No, completely. And you're so right, right, John. Like, you know, if, if you had a broken arm, I, I, I would arm in a sling or it's in a cast. I see yeah. that. I guess someone has anxiety or, or depression or disorder um, or they're suicidal. I see that. So, so for me, I, I will say this. I have been, been at, at the um, burning kind of judged in my, my own life where many times people have looked at me and dm or in person people have said you know like what do you megan because you're pretty um you know had a great childhood because you have money and i'm like victim of being prejudged because of i have my you know stuff together or i just think that some people are so they really have no idea what's going on or you know just by looking at someone you cannot think that is something that as a society trained to who is oh oh my gosh you know she drives this car her body is this or Mm -hmm. she you know does all all these yz so she must blank 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 you know she be happy or she must always have her life uh um you know just whatever like we're so it's so to- toxic feminist in, in us that, that judges and jumps to cons- and it's like you know brain to not do that because not on the receiving end of it so i am feels so i try not to do that to people online mm-hmm. you know whether they're a celebrity or i never judge because you really don't know yeah um you you don't know if they have fake notes. So I always try to uh, uh, people love and good energy because I think they're more powerful and it's just, just more like using where it's it um it's more, more productive and beneficial because as I'm wanting to send love to someone. Mm-hmm. It's a two way street. So I always yeah. you know with mental health you just can't judge other people. So. No, no, you, you, no, you can't. And, and I think the other thing, and it's certainly um, something of, of my generation and certainly my cultural background coming from too, is uh, the feeling on both sides, both on the part of the person who has the mental health issues and perhaps on the, uh, on the part of the people they may open up to, there's always been this sense of, it somehow makes you weaker, right? I'm weak, right? My head, you know, it's like if somebody, like you break your leg, people don't go, oh, you must have really weak bones. But if you have this, it's like, oh, you know, there's something, there's a weakness and and you feel it. And then the other person sort of feels it as well. And so that's why people don't want to open up. And especially, you know, in, in, in work or whatever like that is, you know, you don't want to be perceived as weak. So true. And like, I mean, I, I, I people, I know that there is a stigma. I do in, in 2023 and my generation have to feel so alone and stuck with it that there is for sure a stigma and i i think it's just like how they're raised you know traditionally i think i'm not saying this for everyone but i think traditionally men are raised to often you know be a man and do stuff and um you know i we you know we have to we you know treat everyone like i do think that to struggle because they're like oh like i had that you know oh it's really bad i'm weak if i ask for help and it means that i am in fear i'm like losing and it means me and that i can't like trust myself like i said you know i know many job they have a great life you know they're healthy they work in and it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with them it means that to me it's like you know they love to ask for help and i think and I'm saying this from my own experience, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want saying to go to take pills. That's not 
not what I'm saying. I'm to listen to your body to each their own. Yeah. If you need medication, then I am all about healing your best self in a safe yeah. way, talking to you about it. But I do think that, um, so, like I was saying, I think that it's just, you know, we have to do what's best for ourselves. Sometimes that is therapy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is medication. And I think back to what I was saying, you know, with mental health, we can say so talk can get so negative. Like, like, oh my gosh, a loser. I'm such a this yeah. because I have to, to really pause and be mindful of it's all reframable. You know, you could, um, you know, oh, I'm because I have to take medication you could reframe you no know, actually this is a form of self-love or exercising yeah. i'm journaling i'm, I'm going to therapy it means i'm strong it means that i am brave enough to tell someone how i'm feeling because that takes brave it takes a lot of courage sure. it, it takes mm -hmm. you shaking and you're sweating <laughs> but you're asking someone for, for help so really it means, yeah. means that you're strong and a lot of people speak but i just i don't see it that way like and i mm. i get dms from from people saying, you know, or how do I do this? And I need to get help and all this stuff. And I'm you just, just have to know that it means you're, you care about yourself enough. Yeah. You know, that, that's like, that, that's how I see it. I, I just think it's, it's all about, yeah, reframe. You are worth mm -hmm. it. And, and like mental health is just such a, it's you against your, your mind and, and it can feel rating. Right very endless and just but you have to realize that a lot of the times it starts with a to get better it's you know it's not like oh someone who's to eat a healthy meal i don't, I don't always want to do it but i you know go to my therapist's <laughs> sure. office i have to choose the morning and to not look at my phone and to not, not have because it's a choice yes. like no one is forcing like a way yeah that i practice self-love so and and one other thing, I think I think people also need to recognize, especially about young people, that the the COVID the COVID pandemic. I, I really feel that uh, it was the first time a lot of people were exposed to, like you know, they had maybe their friends, maybe their friends' family had a different approach to COVID than they did. Um, Maybe some people. I mean, I know some people who just became completely overwhelmed with fear, right? And because that's the way their family approached it, other people less so and people in the middle. But I think for the first time, there's a lot of these young people were suddenly like, oh, I, I don't know how to deal with my circle here because we're all becoming fractured and, and, and divided and all of this kind of stuff. And that's an immense amount of pressure, particularly as like, you know, there was, a, there was an epidemic at the time. It is. And I think a lot of things from the pandemic and the trauma because, you know, a lot of people as an entire, you know, planet and different through it. And then, you know, for a lot of, we didn't think it would ever end. We we're like, oh, this is our new normal all the time and not be able to see certain things and, you know, live this very restricted way. But it ended. And then and I think a lot of PTSD and, you know, uh, like, is, is it really over? Full, like a lot of people have a fact in the what if what if it comes back mm -hmm. and what if you know what if I never get better and what if we're a lot of what ifs which is always a base but mm -hmm. um you know it's PTSD is hard because you know I mean I had it myself but I went through the pants so I have a lot, a lot of compassion for, for people that maybe mm -hmm. strive you, you know I think in those moments when with what if thought um you have to you have to write it on paper take your thoughts out of your right your, feel like you're on a merry-go-round ride that never like it, it's uh consuming it is cool. and so if you write those thoughts on you know you're able to really really see the thoughts are you know you can label it like which thoughts go which thoughts are catastrophizing so all, all these thoughts we think i think I don't know some that we think we can think a ballpark at like a hundred thousand thoughts a day it has mm -hmm. as a you know genre if you will so each thought some are are next, some are ruminating or reminiscing which is mm -hmm. some are catastrophizing which is feel like what if, if the world 
blows up. Some thoughts are, you you know, uh, it's, it's fascinating. Like each thought really really has place. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people. Some thoughts we create, some some thoughts we don't. Some some, some can be random. Um, in the present moment, because our mind is like, you know, did at Christmas five years ago and remember a person did yesterday in the grocery list and I have to work out and it's like this never ending like our mind is just for me at least my mind is never really truly in the thing I have to work on which is grounding in the present moment and um hmm. and yeah. And, and by the way, I just wanted to focus in on something you said about trauma there, right? And pe- I, I think sometimes people think that trauma has to be something like really extreme, right? You know, yeah. it's like, and they don't realize that the trauma, there's a whole spectrum of trauma. And just because somebody's trauma right. may be, you know, not, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you don't even understand it, or it may seem like, well, that's, doesn't seem like much, you know, I'm expecting some yeah. big revelation. So I think we also have to understand the nature of trauma. I mean, I could talk about that topic for hours on being like anything in life. Yeah, there's this, we've all, every, every single human on, on this planet guarantee has been through a tra- trauma in their life. Whether or not that's a 10 out of 10, like something, very, um, you know, a near death ac- accident or just being sexually abused or something mm-hmm. more severe versus is less severe we've all been through heartache um, um losing you no know, um going through financial crisis hardships right like moving into a new city and losing certain friendships in our lives we've so i think it's important to never belittle your your trauma your trauma mm-hmm. and it's important like i I, through um, just my own form, a lot of heartache. I've been through a lot of uh, health struggles. Like, I, I've been through a lot of things that have just that awful feeling of this is never going to end. Because I have, have, you know, this fear of broken again, or I'm worthless, or, or men want to hurt me. Like, like I, I've been through come up because. Because, mm-hmm. you, you know, on a, a time event a hap- happened, I, I was hurt. Percussions of what happens after. So I heal, but then, and, you know, our brains, right? We want to stay in a safety mode because that's as you from being hurt again. So, so I could recoil and not go on dates and not put myself out. My defense mechanism is... An my, you know, nerve Megan at all costs. Uh, we don't want to get hurt by dates. We don't put ourselves out there because that's a threat. I don't want to get, mm-hmm. you know, that, that safety is its purpose. But after a while, being, I want to have a companion in yeah. my life. I want to have, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to be alone. We all have to realize that those survival mode sometimes to go into it always has an expiration date of when it's just out for me you know these painful by men it's painful painful to uh, uh you know there and to not not live my life because mm-hmm. I do therapy i've done eft tapping all these incredible tools to help me cope and to help me move on. So it's like, I go hard for it. I owe myself the joy of love again. And yes, yes it's mm-hmm. scary because it comes with the possibility of this not working out. But no, there's a magic in it. And so, so yeah. I think that in life, we've all been through traumatic events, but at, there is a science to it and what you're feeling you it's not you you being crazy if you google you know what happens scientifically 
directly to your brain after, like a real thing. PTSD is very real. Um, yeah, I would say to anyone listening, if you have been through where maybe you don't know how to cope with it or they're taking over your life, I would say get help and know that you are not alone. We've like we've all been through it. <laughs> yeah. Moments that, that shaped us into who we are, challenging and scary, but um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and just uh, remember that the the brain is such a powerful tool, and the brain, your brain, will always try and protect you from pain. That's what it, that's what it'll do. That uh, you know, the, the mind body connection is massive, and a lot of people don't understand that. It's like sometimes your brain will will cause you pain in your body because in order to stop you thinking about something that's going to you know too traumatic or it's too upsetting. So I think once you recognize that your brain is just trying to protect you and that you know yeah. it's that's a good thing. But sometimes you have to say, it's okay brain, I'm I'm good. I'm gonna take this one. Yeah. And and that's the that's the cool thing of control and, and whether or not you know are gonna protect us, but we can always always choose to kind of like my life again I don't want to feel so what if and maybe mm -hmm. this guy and I don't know want to live my life and I I don't want to get too old and look back and be like yeah. oh I real guy who was a total jerk who broke my heart to dictate the rest of my life and I never fell in love and I never like because although yeah. I do believe our hardships I'm also a really big ownership you know that guy treated me, but he, he doesn't define the rest of my life. That really big, yeah. like, believer in life is up to you, and, and it's a choice, and you know, not always the easiest thing, but when you, your, your just accountability, whole life change. When you, you know, and instead of being like, oh, Brown, and say, that happened for me, not feel an right. energetic difference happened in your me. body. It happened, for, would not be the woman that I am if those guys yeah. or what I'm yeah. I would, would not be who I am. They, they shape me so for them and I, I like I am they, in saying that I don't feel cool anger or yeah yeah, I mean, the, the reality is uh, when we look back at our lives, some of the greatest teachers uh, we will ever have are the people who we perceive as like the worst people we ever had in our lives, but they, you know, teach us. So, um, <laughs> so you know, we learn from them. Yeah. So anyway, all of Megan's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Megan, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yes. So everyone watching this, so grateful. So... I am a speaker, four-time Amazon bestseller, a mental health advocate. Um, I was 18 years old. I knew the earth was to inspire young adults and my own mental health journey. So at I, you know, decided to leave college and pursue my path back. I've been speaking for years, eight and a half, um, and I truly started these boys and girls clubs wherever I could go there, and then I, you know. Now, I've spoken at many schools. Um, I've given two TEDx talks and I'm speaking bureaus. And I just feel very great. I love posting content on Instagram and YouTube and health. And for you, amazing people to list, though, that's what I'm all about. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Megan. And thank you for watching and listening. See you all again very soon. Yeah.